Jesus alone. Just be comforted, saints. Just be comforted, saints. This goes to you who's lost your loved one.
Become something else. Hey guys, this song I love it in Soto. Uh, in the house, we've got Pastor Malaka Laka, my elder Gavin. After this song, he's going to share the word of encouragement to you, saints. So be encouraged with this song. But I just want to do it in Soto. It says, <laughs> La canke ke kaid te pabuna ke te pile ye na fela te so presen ki lifika ho te u mo kafita Oh, the 
greet the viewers and the saints, everybody who's listening and who's tuning in at this moment in Jesus' name. We thank the Lord for the beautiful Sabbath, the gift of the Sabbath that allows us to rest after spending some much time doing whatever things we had to do to now doing what God requires us to do, which is to rest on a beautiful Sabbath. We hope that this evening and this Sabbath day we will be able to rest in the Lord and really rest in the Lord. From all our fears, from all our cares, from all our worries and rest and rest fully in the Lord. Uh, I'd like to thank the nine friends for hosting me at this beautiful program, Comfort Ye My People. I'm glad and I was very glad even when he asked me to come share as I had noted that all of my friends had been here and I was not called yet. So I was wondering if there's something wrong with me. <laughs> but then he confirmed it when he called me that there's nothing wrong with me. I was actually still in the pipeline to be contacted. I hope that we will be blessed by the Lord with the short message that I will share with us this evening. There is a tendency of worrying too much that the devil tends to cause us to do in our lives every day as we go about with life. I have observed in my short time that I've spent under the sun that the devil most of the times wins all the battles or most of the battles that we go th through or go in with him between our ears. Before we could do anything else, before we could move, he defeats us already in the mind. And how does he do, how does he do this? He, he does it by causing us to be fixated on our abilities, whether it's our physical abilities or our financial muscles or the resources that we have. He causes us to focus so much on what we can do for ourselves or what we can do for others, so much that when we are able to do things for ourselves and to do things for others, we get so excited and we glorify self and the abilities that we have, so much that we become so dependent and reliable on what we can do for ourselves. And my message this evening is to focus on what God can do for us through faith. You know, when we focus so much on what we can do, yes, it is good to know that you are able to walk from one point to point B. It is good to know that you are able to pay rent or to pay this and that, and you don't need to worry about that. But the devil tends to have us focus so much on that ability that we can, I can, I can do this myself, I do not need any help. And therefore, when we have relaxed and now are comfortable with being able to do things for ourselves and then he comes and knocks us with challenges that are so big we look at our abilities and we look at the challenges and we fail and we are paralyzed with fear we are paralyzed knowing that we there is nothing we can do and i want us to i want to comfort us with this that May we think upon the words of the song that was just sung now. My faith, my hope is built on nothing less but Jesus and his righteousness. We are going to read from the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17. And I want to start it from the beginning, from verse 1. And we hear what the writer is intending for us to hear about this battlefield. And this is how it reads, 1 Samuel chapter 17. Now the Philistines gathered their armies together to battle and were gathered at Succoth, which belongs to Judah. They encamped between Succoth and Azekah and Ephes Demon. And, the, and Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and they encamped in the valley of Elah and drew up in battle array, against, battle array against the Philistines. 
And the Philistines stood on the mountain one on one side, and Israel stood on the mount, mountain and on the other side with a valley in between them. And a champion went out from the camp of the Philistines, named Goliath from Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. I want you to note what is being said or what is being done here, what is being portrayed here by the writer. You see, he is not describing the height of everybody else who is at the battlefield. Description is not given of any other person who is gathered and camped there and ready to fight. But the description, the only descriptions that we get are of this man, this champion of the Philistines from Gath. The Bible says that, as we continue to read, that he had a bronze helmet on his head and he was armed with a coat of mail and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze and he had bronze armor on his legs and a bronze javelin between his shoulders. Verse 7, now the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam and his iron spearhead weighed 600 shekels. We can just say it weighed a lot of kgs. Probably it weighed as much as I weigh, you know, 98 kgs or something like that. But the point here is that the spear of his thing was very heavy. The, spear of his, the iron spearhead was very heavy. And a shield bearer went before him. Then he stood and cried out to the armies of Israel and said to them, Why have you come up to line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine and you the servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. If he's able to fight me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. Verse 10, and the Philistines said, the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that I may fight together with. 11. When Saul and his, all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. God always blesses the ring of his word. Amen. Let us pray together. We are grateful, Lord, for your word. We are grateful that each time, whatever situation we go through, each week, each month, each year, you have a word for us. We pray, Heavenly Father, that the situations that your children are going through, the challenges that they may be facing at this moment. May this word be relevant in their lives. May, be, may they be able to be encouraged and given faith, a boost of faith, just to be able to get over to the other side. All these things we pray for in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. As I read the story of David and Goliath for myself a couple of uh, weeks ago, I realized that what I just shared here in the beginning, that the devil tends to want us to focus so much on our abilities so that when we are relaxed and comfortable and confident with what we can do ourselves and for ourselves, then he hits us with things that he knows we cannot stand for or we cannot stand against. And we become so dismayed and so afraid and sometimes paralyzed with fear, and we wonder how can we get on to the other side. I'll give you an example. The devil allows us to know and to be confident that we are able to work out at the gym, for example. You go to the gym and you pump iron and you are able to lift and carry heavy things. And you are confident with that. And as a runner, if you may be a runner, you are able to run many kilometers without stopping, and you finish your exercise. And probably, you know, you are able for your financial muscles, the things you are able to do, you are able to move from one point to the other without thinking about the budget to get into one plane and book the other and be in one location and enjoy yourself and fly from the other one to the next without worrying about how much money is left in your bank account. And while all these things are nice and good, we are able to enjoy them then Satan drops a bomb on us and suddenly you are not able to stand up from your chair. Yet, P 
people know you as the strongest as the, at the gym, who's able to squat and do this and that, but that one morning, you are not able to stand up from your chair, and suddenly you are paralyzed, and your family doesn't know what happened to you. You also don't know what happened to you. And suddenly, there are things falling apart. You cannot get water for yourself. You cannot move from where you are yourself. And the devil, ex with excitement, is happy that he is able, was able to defeat you. And where you were able to spend without checking how much is left in your balance, one day you wake up and all the money that you had is gone. And you look at your children and their education, you wonder, how will I be able to afford these children's education? What will I feed them? How can I continue without having a stable job or a salary that c comes in or a business that brings in money every month? And the devil is excited that you are defeated. And when you refer and you think back on how you were able to do all these things and suddenly you are not able to do them you become filled with despair and you are filled with fear. And the devil gets excited because in that moment, you are defeated. In that moment, he has won. And such is the same for all of us and for many of us. We tend to look at how much we can do for ourselves so much that the devil then twists it around. When these challenges come, we are fixated on how much the challenge or how big the challenge is and how small our ability or our power is. And we focus so much on that, forgetting, forgetting that there is a power bigger or a power higher than that we possess. We forget that there is a man upstairs there is a God in heaven who is able to provide for us things that we cannot provide for ourselves. For the Bible says, in him we move and have our being. We had forgotten that we exist because he is. We had thought in our brains and in our minds that we can do things because we can do things. We have the ability to do all those things. Now, in this story, the Bible tells us that these people were camped ready to fight these Philistines. But there was a man, there was a champ from Gath who was bigger than everybody who had camped around that place, around that valley. And the Bible says then he came out and approached the army of Israel and asked them, who is able to fight me? And they looked at him. The Bible says for 40 days, and I can just imagine also in my head, for 40 days they get up, they are ready to fight, but they look at the size and the length of his sword, and they look at their own swords, and they say, no, we can't answer him. Let's keep quiet. Nobody should dare speak to this man. Look at the size of his sword and look at the size of yours before you dare say anything to him. And they listened to him, the Bible says, for 40 days, as he was defying the army of Israel, as he was scarcing and as he was making fun of them, mocking them, each and every day from day one up to day 40, he stood up there, they looked at his shield, they looked at his stature, and they looked at themselves, they said, we can't do this. We are defeated. This is the end of it. And the Bible says the man continued every day to hell insults at the army of Israel and these men looked at him and they did not do anything. And their king as well, King Saul, looked at the man. The Bible says he was also tall, by the way. But his tallness did not compare with the height of this giant. He also probably looked at himself and he looked at the giant and he said, I cannot stand against this man. And insults were hurled at them and they were defeated in their minds before they could even be defeated at the battlefront. That's what the devil does. He comes showing things that are gigantic, things that are big to us when it comes to our sight, things that we can see. You can see that this problem is huge. This debt is big. This sin is too deep. You look at the list of your offenses against other people and against God, and you say, I am too dirty to be cleansed. And in despair, you give up. I am not worthy to be saved. 
Little do you know that Jesus' blood, as it rolled, as it fell on the cross, was it not only enough for you, but for the rest of the world. It is not just enough to cover your sins, but enough to cover the sins of the entire universe, of the entire human race, everybody who sins against God and against other human beings is able to be saved by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. There's, not amount, there's no amount of sin that is too big, too gigantic for Jesus' blood to cleanse. But that's what the devil wants us to think. From time to time, he compares the challenges that he faces, that he puts in front of us, and what we have done, and our ability to save us from our situations. And we look at what we can do for ourselves, and we fail, and we become afraid. There's a statement I once said, also after reading this uh, story, from recognizing what the devil does. He plays a game that is called um, mind trap. He traps us in this mind a trap where we think that our sins, our magnitude, our size, and the problems that we face cannot be, I mean, the problems that we face cannot be overcome. They, we cannot triumph over them when we look at our own abilities. And this is the statement. You see, it is a cognitive illusion to look at your problems and to think that God is smaller than your problems. For the reality is that God is bigger than everything else. He is not just bigger than you, but he is bigger than your problems. When you look at God and when you look at your problems, you will find strength to stand up, to rise up and say, yes, this is my challenge. Yes, this is the position I'm in, the financial mess that I'm in. But the God I serve does not only own the bank account that I have, but he owns the account and the millions of the world. He is able to provide for me. If I am broke, it doesn't mean God is broke. When I look at my budget and I think of the things I need to cover, it does not mean that God too is broke or that God does not have the ability to provide. And I want to remind us in this story and to encourage us of what David did. The Bible tells us that David then arrived at the battlefront as he would come to bring lunch for his brothers. And the Bible says when he gets there, he hears the insults that this man has been saying to the men of God, to the army of Israel for the past 40 days. And he listens and he says, who is this man who is busy kissing and hailing insults on the, man of, on, on, on the name of God? I shall go and I, I will fight him. You know the story, the brother, his brother decides to say, no, 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 what have you come to do here? You must go back and take off the sheep because you have left our father's few sheep alone. And David ignores that. He goes to the king, finds somebody else to speak to, and that person go, takes him to the king, and he tells the king the same thing. And he says, I have heard the insults. I have heard the words this man is saying. When he gets there, he does not speak about the size of the man. David's concern is not the weight of the spear of Goliath. When he gets there, he says, I have heard the insult. I know I've been listening to what this, what this man has been saying. Who is this Philistine who is dragging the name of the Lord like this? He does not get there and say, oh, yeah, no, this man is big. I understand why you have not started the battle. I understand why nobody has fought him. No, he gets to King Saul and he says, I have heard what this man has been doing and I shall go and I will fight him. King Saul says, no, but you can't. This man has been a warrior from his youth. He is now a grown-up man, an old man, and he is experienced. He has a lot of experience. You know nothing about battle. And David still persists and says, I will go and fight him. The discouragement and all the words that Saul said to him did not discourage him. He ignored them and said, I will go and fight this man. And the Bible says, then Saul allowed him to go fight him. 
and he goes, the Bible says, as he goes to approach him, as he goes to fight him, uh, Saul gives him his armor, and he says, no, no, I can't use. He tries to walk around in it, and the Bible says, he says, no, I can't use it because I'm not too familiar with this. I can't use this. I've never used it before. And the lesson right there, friends, when you go to battle, when you go to fight, your own fight, use things that you are comfortable with. Use things that you know. Use familiar weapons. Use familiar instruments. Do not use foreign things. When you are faced with unemployment, do not attend. If you have never been there, do not start today. Do not go to a sangoma. Use prayer if you have always used prayer to overcome your battles. Do not start new things on the day of battle. Use things that you have always used in the past. You have used prayer. You have fasted in the past. Use prayer and fast even in this corona situation. Yes, Fight your battles the way you know how. Yes, sir. Do not introduce a new weapon on the day of battle. When we go to race, uh, I do cycling from time to time. And some of the in, uh, instructions or advices I was given is that when you go to cycle the 947, my pastor, do not buy a new kit. Don't buy a new cycling kit. Don't bring a new bicycle. Use what you have used to train all along. Yeah. For the things that you know will be comfortable and you will know how they feel. You will become one with your kit. You will become one with your bike. And nothing will be new except for the road. And you will be able to succeed that way. And I did not listen. I brought the same bike. I brought... Uh, part of the kit was still the same, but I brought new bib shorts. And I can tell you, I pushed for 60 kilometers. I was comfortable, but for the last 30 kilometers, my bib shorts started biting my bum because they were new and they were not familiar to my body. My skin started to get itchy, and I started slowing down because I had used a new instrument for the day of competition, for the day of the race. And I want to say to you, David knew what was what his task was. He knew what he was supposed to do. And as he walked in that armor, he said, I can't use, I can't use new instruments. I can't use new weapons. I will use what I know. And I want to say to you, keep to what you know on the day of battle. Whatever challenge you face, how, no matter how big it may be, if you use what you are comfortable with, you will be able to succeed. And the Bible says, then David went out, and I want to show a picture here as, as I'll be closing shortly, portray a picture of what the writer intends for us to see, and also close it with what Jesus says when he speaks to his disciples. The Bible says he goes to fight him, and as he goes to fight him, with all the information we are given about uh, Goliath's armor, how big and how heavy it is, we are told that then David takes five stones. The comparison. There's a David, a small man, and Goliath, a giant. Mm. David with a big, I mean, Goliath with a big and heavy sword, and David with a small couple of stones. The contrast is there. And the, the writer wants us to know that it is not our abilities, it is not the size of the giant, but what you come with. And David went, and as he goes, you remember as he told Saul, he said, I will go in the name of the Lord. Mm. The same God who has brought me out of the head of a lion, the same God who has brought me out of the hands or the claws of a bear will deliver me even in this fight. He will deliver me from Goliath as well. And the Bible says then he went and he did his thing and he threw the stone and Goliath went down, 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 Goliath fell and he hit the ground. And with his weight of his body and the weight of his armor, there probably was a small earthquake around where he fell. And there's a lesson right there. Even as captured in Jesus' words. You do not have to have big faith to conquer big challenges. Faith as small as a mustard seed. 
Jesus said to them, if you have that kind of a faith, you can say to this mountain, mustard seed, this small, in fact, too small, I can't even capture it. I would have had to have the actual mustard seed to show you how small the object, I mean, the article Jesus was referring to. And the mountain that he was pointing to, he says, small, big, but with that kind of faith, you can say to this mountain, move, and it will move. With the stones that David carried and Goliath standing on the other side, because of faith in the one that had led and seen David in all those dangerous circumstances, David was able to win. For faith as little as a mustard seed is enough to conquer whatever big challenges you have. And we have done this sometimes, and we, we have sought to apply faith as little as a mustard seed, but we have applied it wrongly. How have we done so? We try to apply faith as small as a mustard seed, but that faith we applied on our abilities. In as much as I can have faith in myself, I will try an accomplishment. No, yes, faith as small as a mustard seed, but not faith in yourself but faith in Jesus, not faith in your abilities, but faith in the God of heavens and the earth. For David said that, God, I see the lion, I see the bear, and I see Goliath. And when I look at all of these things that are so big to me and are heavier and bigger than myself, but when I look at God, he's bigger than them all. There is nothing that can deter me when I come in faith in this God, and I fight this challenge, and I fight in this battle. And that's how he won, by applying small stones to a big Goliath. If we can apply faith as small as a mustard seed to whatever challenge that we have, we will be able to, to overcome. May God bless us as he impressed these words upon our minds, as he impressed these words in our lives, that we may apply them. And stop focusing on what we can do for ourselves. Yes, it is good when we are able to do things for ourselves. God does not need to come and feed you a meal because you can eat it yourself. But where things become difficult, where situations become impossible, where you see that your abilities cannot do it, your strength cannot do it, that's where Jesus comes in. That's where God comes in. That's where you say, my sins are too many, many as the sins of the sea, but with Christ's righteousness, my hope is built only in Jesus. With Christ's righteousness and Christ's blood, I can be cleansed, I can be saved. With God's resources, I can get out of this financial mess. With God's strength, I can be restored. Do you trust him? Do you trust God to restore you? Do you trust God to provide for you? Do you trust God to lead you, to give you wisdom? Trust him. Have faith in Jesus. Amen. Let's pray together. We are grateful, Lord, for this reminder that reminds us that you are God for all our circumstances. You are God when things are going well. Even when we think and believe that we move and function because of our own strength, it is still you that is carrying us from one point to the other. We pray that you help us to forget self and forget, forget self-sufficiency and be reminded at all times that whatever we have, we have because you have given us. We move because you have given us ability so that when all these other muscles are gone, financial muscles, physical muscles are gone, and we are not able to move, we will remember that it was not them in the first place. It was Jehovah who made us move. And whatever challenges that we face in our lives, in our corners, no matter how big they may be, help us, dear Lord, to move our attention from our abilities, from our strength, and to move our attention to what you are able to do. Let us not look at the size of our problems and compare them with us, but let us look at the size of our problems and compare them with you and make this prayer that says we come in the name of the Lord and we shall overcome because we trust in Jesus. All these things we pray for in Jesus' name. Amen.
thank you, thank you so much to Mfundi Swami. God bless you, Mfundi Swami. What a blessing it is that even if we go through these things, the faith small as a mustard seed, you can go through the bereavement and the Lord will, will be with you. Uh, just to encourage you further, uh, just know what he is Kati Asaziwa Sona. Is Kati Asaziwa Sister uh, Renolda, you've asked for a song. Uh, we'll do it as we file out. Let's just do number 42 uh, as we close. Then we'll do your song as we file out, my sister. Uh, thank you for the prayers, by the way, you do in the morning. I know you are a team of people who are praying for us. Excellent. Amen. Oh. 
He's doing the dress rehearsal uh, with TGC, Tswani Gospel Choir. They're doing a performance tomorrow. If you're in Pretoria around Market Theatre tomorrow, let's hook up there. We're just going to listen to him uh, as he strums those strings to worship our God in heaven. Otherwise, no limits at, in Rosebank tomorrow, Cedar. Go watch them. Uh, and thank you so much that uh, you've been a wonderful audience. May the good Lord be with you as you keep encouraging people. Amen, Bazaloan. Till we meet again. By the way, next Sabbath we have, next Friday we have uh, Dr. Pastor Errol Storat from the U.S. Uh, watch him on YouTube on Church of Orange, the Church of Orange. Uh, so watch him. He's going to encourage the saints next Friday. So all the way from New York. So we are blessed till we meet again. But as we file out, Mrs. Mashamaite will just say, shine upon you and give you peace that surpasses all understanding in Christ Jesus. Amen. Bye-bye. Bless you, saints.